In this module, we will talk about the confidence interval estimates for the difference between two population means. But we are talking about a special case where our samples are independent with unknown population variances. And we assume that these population variances, though unknown, are equal. So we got to check three assumptions. The first talks about whether the two samples are independent or not. Secondly, we got to check whether the two samples belongs to the populations that follows the normal probability distribution. And thirdly, whether the measurements in each group have the known variance. And if it's not known, then whether they have equal variances or not. In this module, we're talking about the special case where our two groups are independent and both the samples are coming from the population that follows the normal probability distribution and the population variances are unknown and are assumed to be equal. The expression to calculate the confidence interval estimate can be given by the estimate that is x1 bar minus x bar 2 plus minus t 1 minus alpha by 2 with nu that is the degrees of freedom and the standard error of estimate. Since we are assuming that the unknown population variances are equal, we try to calculate this pooled variance estimate that is known as sp square here. One other point we need to carefully note that here we have t distribution that will help us calculate the reliability factor. In this whole expression x1 bar is a mean from the sample 1, x2 bar is a mean from the sample 2, sp square is a pooled variance from sample 1 and sample 2 and nu is a degree of freedom and in this special case it is n1 plus n2 minus 2. Let's talk a bit about pooled estimate of common variance and when we talk about pooled estimate of common variance it is obtained by comparing the weighted average of the two sample variances where first sample variance is S1 square and second sample variance is S2 square. And each sample variance is weighted by its degrees of freedom, which is N1 minus 1, a degrees of freedom for the first sample, and N2 minus 1 will be the degrees, degrees of freedom for the second sample. And if these sample sizes are equal, this weighted average is arithmetic mean of the two sample variances. But if the two sample sizes are not equal, the weighted average take advantage of the additional information provided by the larger sample. So we get this pooled estimate as a weighted average and denoted by sp square. Let's take an example. A research team wants to determine the effectiveness of an integrated outpatient dual diagnosis treatment program for mentally ill subjects. And the authors were addressing the problem of substance abuse issues among people with severe mental health disorders. For this, they conducted a retrospective chart review for 50 individuals at VA San Diego Healthcare Systems. And one of the outcome variables examined was the number of inpatient treatment days for psychiatric disorder during the year following the end of program. They had two groups. The first group, they had 18 subjects with schizophrenia and the mean number of treatment days was 4.7 with a standard deviation of 9.3. For the second group, they had 10 subjects with bipolar disorder and the mean number of psychiatric disorder treatment days was 8.8 .8, with a standard deviation of 11.5 days. So here we wish to construct 95% confidence interval estimate for the difference between the means of the populations represented by the two samples. Here we assume that both samples come from the population that follows a normal probability distribution and their population variances are unknown but assumed to be equal. We got to 
check for three assumptions here. The first assumption will be whether the two samples are independent. Second assumption, whether the both samples are coming from the population that follows the normal probability distributions. And thirdly, whether the variances are known or unknown. And in this specific case, we are looking at the case where variances, population variances are unknown and they are assumed to be equal. Checking the first assumption, which is generally verified with the process of the data collection. And here we can clearly see that we have two groups. The group one is having the schizophrenia and the group two is having the bipolar disorder. The people having schizophrenia are entirely different from the people having bipolar disorder. Hence, we can assume that the, both the groups are independent. Second assumption is for normality, that both samples come from the population that follows the normal probability distribution. To check this, sometimes it's priorly known to us from different phenomena, or we can test it by ourselves using goodness of fit tests. In this given example, both the samples come from population that follows the normal probability distribution, and it is already stated in the statement given to us. Hence, we assume that this assumption is verified. Thirdly, testing whether the variances are known or not. And in this statement, it clearly says that their population variances are unknown, but assumed to be equal. If these are not known, then we can estimate it from the sample and use Levine's test to compare if unknown population variances are equal or not. But it has already been stated in the statement that they are assumed to be equal. Hence, we'll take the scenario where the samples are independent, each population follows the normal distribution, and the variances are unknown but equal. We use the given formula to calculate the 95% percent con 100 into 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval estimate. With this given information, we have S1 square, that was 9.3 square, and S2 square, it's 11.5 square, which are the, the variances for the sample 1 and variances for the sample 2. We use this to calculate SP square, which turned out to be 102.33. And the degrees of freedom for these tests is N1, which is the sample size of group 1, N2, which is the sample size of group 2, minus 2. We turn out to 18 plus 10 minus 2 equals to 26. To calculate the reliability factor, we have confidence level of 0.95, that is 95%. We have degrees of freedom, that is equals to 26. Using this information and making use of the table from the t student's t distribution, we can see at t 0 0.975 and 26 deg degrees of freedom, the value is 2.056. We use this value as the reliability coefficient and use it into the confidence interval expression that we are given. The, hence, the 95% confidence interval for the difference between population mean is given by 4.7 minus 8.88 plus minus 2.055 and the standard error of the estimate. Solving it, it gives us two values, that is first value is minus 12.3, and the other value is 4.10. So this is the confidence interval that we got. So we can say that if we were to repeat the study many, many times and compute confidence interval in the same way, about 95% of the intervals would include the difference between the population means. And since the interval includes zero, we can conclude that population means may be equal.